1995, we get the place, okay? Or 94, we do the land trade. In 95, we open the place up, and for the first 10 years, they stand here like I do, and they say, look at all these neat symbols. And they don't realize they have a solar calendar on the wall right here. 2005, 10 years after we open, Ken Zoll discovers that we have a solar calendar, and the way he discovers it, as I understand, is he's watching the wall. He's a docent, just like I am, and he's giving tours. But on the 21st of the month, like on the different equinoxes and the solstices, he realizes that certain things light up. So he finally gets a grant, and he's able to study it and film it for 18 months. And then he writes this book. He actually writes two books. He writes this one. Both of these books, this is Sanawa Sun Watcher, and we don't have any right now. We're sold out, and we're waiting for his order to get here. But you can find this on Amazon Prime, and then he writes this one, Understanding Rock Art of Sedona, because he studied it all. And he's not an archaeologist, okay, but he's really good, and uh, these are interesting books. I always tell people, this is the best one for layman terms, and they, we do have these up at the visitor center. But he discovers this, and he realizes, okay, another docent says, hey, Ken, I'll help you make something up, a teaching aid, so you can show people how it works. So let's start at the top. We've got these two black things up here. They're those things right there, okay? Ken calls them gnomes, and they're natural. They were not put there. Those are pressure forced out, pressure fused by the contraction expansion. But when Ken got a chance to climb up there in 2011, six years after he discovered it, he was allowed to put a, uh, what do you call it? The, I lost the word. The scaffolding. He was allowed in 2011 to put a scaffolding up there as long as you didn't touch the wall. Because remember, this is sacred, even today. And what he found is that up in there, there are pieces of basalt, volcanic rock, been wedged in so that these two rocks cannot move. And they were basalt isn't there. That's sandstone. It wasn't carved on. It wasn't shaped or anything. That's natural. So they would have put a ladder up, and the Indians wedged in some rocks so that those two cannot move, okay? Pretty cool. Then he looks at this right here, which is this thing. Ken calls it the sliver stone, okay? What he discovers about that are kind of neat. He realizes this is all, this crack, that's all natural. Nobody did that. And that is red sandstone. And it was black. You can see it right here. But here's what he noticed about it. It was pulled forward about two, two and a half inches. Pulled forward, pulled out. And then you see this rock here? That wasn't there. The Indians jammed that down on top to keep it from falling back into the crack the way it was. They pulled it forward and put the rock on top so it can't move. So then he looks at it a little closer, and I told you, it was black, just like this. Well, they sanded it off or abraded it with either a harder rock or stone or uh, a stick or even an animal bone. So that's the natural, the soft pink, and it's contrasted by the dark on either side. Well, what he looks at is then he starts looking right at the knife edge. And the same way they make points, the Native Americans make a point, an uh, arrowhead or something, a spear, they pressure flake. Using a stick or a bone, they pressure flake obsidian <coughs> or chert, and they can flake it off to make an edge. Well, that's got a knife edge on there, and it's carved on. And it has a certain design on that knife edge. So he goes, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what that's about. And then there are like 13 or 14 symbols here. I forget the number, but this thing right here is called the falling spiral. It's right there. This is how they count, okay? It starts right up here at the dot, 
And when the sun and the shadow are right there on that dot, it's March 21st, and then the sun's moving, and when it gets down to this, it's June 21st, summer solstice, and when it goes back up and gets to there again, it's September 21st, okay? That's the falling spiral. Attached to the last dot is a jagged line and then a spiral. We'll talk about what all that means. Then you got these three big concentric circles. One, one, two, three. The dot is the sun. The circles represent the power coming off the sun or the rays, okay? Three big ones. <coughs> and then there's four little ones right there. One, two, three, four. Then you got this squiggly line, maybe a mountain range or a snake, right here and right there. And then you got these three things. Looks like a fish skeleton. Everybody see that one right there? There's a second one. There's a third one. Modern day hope. Hey, folks, come on in. I'm just I'm describing. I'm showing them all the symbols of the solar calendar. The Hopis tell us that's not a fish skeleton right there. It looks like one to me. When I first saw it, I said, oh, fish skeleton. Hopis tell us that's their symbol for corn. When you look at this one and this one and this one. So I buy that. But remember, Hopis see that as corn. Maybe the Sanawas, maybe that was a fish. We just don't know what the Sanawas thought because we're talking about 800 to 1,000 years ago. And so we don't know. And then lastly, you got this thing right here. Looks like a sickle. Anybody see that? Yeah. And then a little asterisk right there. Well, we know it's not a sickle because I told the early folks, it, there's no metal. Metal doesn't come to, this, to North America until the 1580s with the Spanish. And they only have wood, bone, and rock to work with. But the way we know that that's a person and not a sickle is down on the bottom there, there's two little feet on each one of those. Two little feet. And the Hopis and a choreographer told us that this symbol, like this, is an international symbol for a dancer. Okay? So let's put the whole thing into perspective here. And this is how I heard the story, so I'll do the best I can. And we have to remember that when we hear certain ceremonies and practices, they're what the Hopis are doing today and what we, they call them today, and we're not sure if they call them the same thing or practice them exactly the same way with Sanawa. But we're sure, you know, we think that there's probably some similarities, okay? We're told that at the end of February... The Hopis today have what they call a bean ceremony. It's when they pray and are asking the Kachina spirits. Now, Kachina spirits, or however, or Kasina, they didn't come into effect. That that term didn't come into effect until after the Sanawa people were here. So Sanawa may have called it something else. But the Hopis today call it the Kachina or Kasina. They live in the San Francisco Peaks up there by Flagstaff. And the bean ceremony at the end of February, they would have been asking them to come down and help them with their planting. Okay, so March 21st rolls around. Now remember I here I told you we think, I think this is the turtle clan. Ken thinks it's a lizard. But part of the water clan, those are the people who watch the sun and count the days. Okay? Well, in order to know what season you're in, you have to be able to see where the sun comes up. You, that means you've got to be up on the mesa. We're down here in a hole. You, we can't see sunrise. We won't have the sun here until 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So somebody from that clan, from the water clan or turtle clan, was probably up on a mesa somewhere. And we don't know how it happened, but let's just guess. Maybe they sent a runner Maybe they said in seven, day, in seven sunrises or ten sunrises, the sun will be behind a certain mountain. It'll come up. That's the time of spring. Now, they didn't call it March 21st, but they would have 
we call it that today. And the sun will be in the right spot to know that it's the first day of spring. So here we go. March 21st. The sun comes up at that certain spot. These people know it's that day. They're waiting. The sun rises in the east. It keeps coming up. Finally, it comes up over the top of this wall at 12.30, 1 o'clock, and it shines down on the face of the wall. Those two big boulders cast shadows. Ken calls them a shadow bar. So here they are. But right there in the light, that lights up. Okay? And they would have put a mark on the wall. And before I forget, we think that the solar calendar was probably put on first, and then the other things were added later. So on March 21st, first day of spring, that's when the sun is coming up over the equator and moving north. We call that the vernal equinox. The way I heard the story is, guess what day that is? First day of spring, guess who arrives here? The Kachina or Casina, however you pronounce They arrive and they say to the people, wake up, wake up. It's no longer time to sleep. It's not winter anymore. Time to get the ground ready to plant. Here's a picture out of Ken's book, a blow-up. This is March 21st. And there's the light. It's lit up right there, okay? Now you're going to see this again because this lights up twice, this one. March 21st and September 21st. If you can see right here, here's the light bar. Light and dark. It's right underneath that dot right there. So it starts the counting. Okay? Mm -hmm. 30 days goes by. So March 21st, start getting ready. Kachina, Kachina, Kachina are here. Let's go to April 21st. Sun's getting higher in the sky, so the shadows are getting lower. It's like a pendulum. This one, the second one, lights up. That's April 21st. I remember the story this way. A is for April. A is the first letter in the alphabet. This is going to be the first planting, the early planting, the first planting. Why? Well, every good farmer knows that you don't put all your seeds down at once because you might have a frost, you might have a heavy rain, and you could lose everything. So early planting, first planting, April. Let's go 30 more days. May. May. Higher, longer days, look what's lit up. This one right here. The corn. Here is May. Shadow, shadow, and that fish-like looking symbol is lit up. Right there. It lights up. M for May, M for Main. The main planting, the second planting goes in. But that's the main planting. Let's go one more 30-day period. June 21st. What's June 21st? First solstice. Summer solstice. <laughs> Longest day of the year. Sun is as far north. We have as much sunlight. Look at where we're at right here. Light bar, shadow. We're right at the end of the calendar, right there. June 21st. Longest day of the year. These four little ones. This one's right there. It's as deep as it's going to go. Right there, that one lights up. And on the other side of this shadow bar is the dancing glyph right here. This one is, there's a shadow bar right there and the edge of it, and that lights up. So, pass this around. This is an actual picture of the summer solstice, June 21st from Ken. Okay, so let's talk about, and... So what we know that happens is third planting, okay? So early planting first, main planting, and finally the third planting. Then modern day Hopis tell us after they get the third planting in, they have a period of 16 days where they rest, they fast, they pray, and they give thanks. To who? The Kachinas, or Kasina, however you pronounce it. And at the end of the 16 days of fasting and prayer, they have a big ceremony called the Niman, N-E-M-A-N, the Niman ceremony. Translated to us, it means the home dance. Remember the symbol, the dancing glyph? 
they're having a celebration on July 8th telling the Kachina spirits if that asterisk is symbolic of the spirit, the Kachina spirit, you can go home, home dance. You can go back home. Remember where they live? The San Francisco Peaks. Thank you for helping us. You can go home. Now, you look, so that takes care of this one. Now we look at the dot right here. What do we call that weather pattern in Arizona and the Southwest from June 15th to September 15th? Monsoons. Monsoons. We get our rains then. But if you know anything about the monsoons, we got to get moisture here first. The moisture comes from the Gulf of Mexico. And so for about the first 30 days, we get nothing but dry lightning. And that's usually when we get all of our forest fires. Ken believes and we think that jagged line might represent lightning and that there, you're going to see lightning at that time of year. But then it's followed by a spiral. Okay, Spirals are different than concentric circles. Spirals usually mean water or possibly rain. And so if you think about that, we're here at the dot and we're good. You know, if, they're, if the shaman are trying to tell the people what's going to happen in the time of year, the, the seasons, you're going to see lightning, but then we're going to get our rain. Now, watch this. I, I think that this is interesting, and it may not be correct, but if you start at the dot and you follow it out, what direction is it going? From the dot in the center. Start at the dot, and what direction is it going? Counterclockwise. Counter Tonight, if you watch the news, when you see that that man or woman stand in front of the green screen and the circle, the L, comes up for a storm, look at that and see which way the winds go. They go counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. Down where you're at, they go the opposite way. If you don't believe me, flush the toilet at home. Ours doesn't work that way because of the way the water. But watch the water go down. Don't watch what goes down. Watch the water go down in your toilet bowl at home. Up here, it goes counterclockwise. Down south, down under, the other way. It's called the Coriolis effect. Now, how do you know, why is it made in that direction? Well, I'm a man of faith. I don't believe that any of this was up here by coincidence. But if you watch long enough and you've been in Arizona, you know that when we get a storm, the winds come from the south, southwest. And they back around counterclockwise and come completely around. You people have been here for 800 years, from 600 to 14. Somebody was watching, I think, because it's not by accident. I just don't think it's by accident. But maybe that's just the way they drew it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Okay? If you don't like it, come up with your own. So, now we have all of this stuff. The sun's going the other way now. It starts, the days start getting shorter, the sun's moving. July 21st. Corn takes 90 to 100 days to grow. So this was put in in April 21st, so May, June, July. July 21st, you can bring in the early crop. August 21st, you can bring in the one that was put in in May. And guess where we're at here? September 21st, right back to the beginning, right underneath the light and the dark, it's right underneath there, we're right back to here again, September 21st, you put your corn in on June 21st, July, August, September, you can bring in the late harvest. What Ken realized is that all of the symbols have been used with the exception of one, this one right here, that sun figure. That one right there. That's the only one that hasn't been. So what happens on December 21st? What is that called? Solstice. Winter solstice. Shortest day of the year. The sun is way down low in the horizon. Okay? It's the shortest day of the year. And it's as far south as it's going to go. So Ken's looking at that. And he's standing here. And he says, wow, the sun's way down there. And if it comes through that rock... There's going to be a light bar way up here, but there's nothing up there. And so he says, where 
What happens then? Well, here's what he found out. This is what happens. It comes through 